15th Southeastern Conference Championship for the Georgia Bulldogs, number two all time, Matt DeBerry. Uh, I don't even know what to say. Yeah, 22 to 19, another overtime victory for the Cardiac Dogs, man. This team <laughs> keeps us on our edge. Um, again, just a, an outstanding performance. Carson Beck goes down, Gunnar Stockton comes in in the second half, leads the way, almost threw the game away, but in my opinion, this was about Georgia's defense, another elite effort. They gave up over 200 yards on the ground to UMass, over 200 to Georgia Tech. They gave up only 31 rushing yards on the ground to a Texas team that was really starting to run the ball well. 28 carries, 31 yards for that Texas run game. That's it. Quinn Ewers did throw for two, or 358, excuse me. Wow. One touchdown and two picks to Dalen Everett. But this game was about the leaders stepping up. This team continues to show fight aggression um, the defense was outstanding but guys on offense stepped up as well the tight end play I thought was terrific the wide receivers still have to catch the football it, it, it's been awful this year and we saw more of that Ryan um, Georgia only threw for 136 yards but Gunnar Stockton give, did give them a spark running the ball a little bit it kind of opened up the run game Trevor Etienne a banged up running back two touchdowns the only two scores in the game Peyton Woodring made big kicks. Oscar Delp came in clutch. Uh, Monroe Freeling was battling an injury. He stepped up at left tackle. This team fights, and that's a big reason why they are SEC champs going through the toughest schedule in the country, Ryan. And they won the SEC tonight. Massive, massive. You were, you were talking about, it. is this even one of the top 10 wins in, in Georgia football or in Kirby Smarts, in the Kirby Smart era? I don't know, but it was... A very important one because you get the bye and it was just another crazy one a week after one of the craziest games we had seen we see the first overtime in SEC championship history I thought they were gonna lose when Texas was driving down the fields um, in the fourth quarter and they had gotten it to under two minutes and they had the ball Georgia's defense stepped up held them to a field goal did that how many times tonight lot, four times lot, five times where they they held Texas to a field goal when it could have been a touchdown and, and Texas put together some really good drives and they ended up getting three points instead of six or seven so that was a big part of it Dalen Everett again like like he did in the first game forced two turnovers um, Chas Chambliss Chas wow. Chambliss making a bunch of huge plays Trevor Etienne getting out there he was supposedly a game time decision <laughs> he ends up playing and he makes a ton of big plays obviously scores the game winning touchdown you got Gunnar Stockton getting hurt the, the play before that and Carson Beck with his I don't even know with his whatever his injury is you could tell his arm was hurting goes in to make the handoff it was just craziness like this entire season has been that's been the story no matter how this ends up being finished in the end this has been a crazy Georgia football season and this is what they wanted, and this is what they set out to do, and it was difficult. Kirby Smart calling out Greg Sankey at the end of, or during the trophy ceremony for the schedule that they got. It, you know, there were certain points during the season where it didn't look like tonight was going to happen for Georgia, and it did. Yeah, a lot of good summary there. Um, 40,000 foot view, 15th, 15th, 15th Southeastern Conference Championship, only behind Alabama. Um, who wasn't here tonight, whose playoff hopes could be teetering, I can't tell, um, but it doesn't look great. Um, I think I think this team can win the national championship. I think that they have the capability to do it when ETN is healthy, when Beck is healthy, when the offensive line plays the way that it should, like they did in the second half. They play like that in the first half. Georgia's probably winning that game 10-6 to six or something, maybe 13-6, to six, but the defense was exceptional. Um, you know, Georgia needs to get healthy. Got four weeks, okay? And uh, you know, this this group, this duo, loves the Sugar Bowl. It's, it's one of the marquee events in college football. Now, it's not the Rose Bowl with the ambiance and all that stuff, but I'm just saying, it's a great. It's it just. I grew up watching the Sugar Bowl. I watched the Rose Bowl growing up, but it was a Sugar Bowl for me. And we celebrate it in our house actually when um, when when I'm home <laughs> on those moments. But I I just I think this is Kirby's best coaching job that he's ever done tonight and um i i don't want to i don't want to like that's my lead is that you saw a georgia team that was probably not the better team i guess certainly not in the first half stuck with it mentally the mental toughness of these guys is something that people like rafael nadal federer 
Djokovic, all these guys that are out there by themselves. I mean, these guys, you can learn from this team as a human being just what it's like to deal with adversity. People talk about adversity. It's just, it's, I mean, you, you really deal with adversity in your life. They showed tonight that they're ready for those moments when they get bad news, Matt. And winning this game, I, I could not see the championship moment. Uh, I also don't see the road lane, lane right now. Um, but I think that, you know, this was important to ETN, but 15 Southeastern Conference champions, the championships, like Shock, Green, Stetson, uh, Jake Fromm. I mean, you remember the name of the people that won the conference championship, and Tate Rattler said tonight the specific reason he came back was to win the SEC championship. He did not like the way he felt coming off the field last year. I tell you what, it feels like this team plays their best when their backs are against the wall and people think they're not going to show up. They think, you know, they, things aren't going to go well. Guys get down. They fight, and we've seen yeah, that all year long, whether they're down. Another come from behind victory, Ryan. I say that every week. Um, yeah. But even with the fake punt, you know, Georgia did a great job of coaching. Um, they did. They, they, they outcoached Texas. They really did. Uh, they did. And they Period. should get a lot of credit for that. And the guys just kept battling and they kept fighting. And even after that Gunner Stockton interception, where you're thinking, what is going on? That's the last thing he could have done. Texas gets life. Ryan, you said they were marching down the field. Again, it didn't look great. And that defense stepped up. They sacked Quinn Ewers six times in this game. Um, he was lucky. Quinn Ewers was lucky that he fell on that ball because he fumbled it in the, uh, the play before the kick. I could not see that. He definitely fumbled it, period. Aaron Smith dropped some passes, but he fell on he, a big that fumble. That was huge. Yeah, Nate Frazier fumbled at the three. Huge. Aaron Smith is there. And, Ryan, we talked about it the previous drive. Anthony Evans fumbles the ball, and he He's falls on it. got the ball it. out here. That was the scariest yeah. four-yard you know, rush pass, whatever, I've ever seen. So they had some – the ball break their way a little bit, but they still came out and they earned it. Uh, Pot, uh, Woodring hit their field, his field goals. Texas's kicker missed, missed two. It. Georgia oh, earned he missed this two. Win. He missed two. Let me let me I, say this real quick. He did miss two, I think. Yeah. I'm yeah. sorry. I do. I do want to just say this, and I'll throw it to you. Uh, I think some of this is just only mental for Arian and like you know some guys. I mean, it's there, and they they just got to kind of flush they, this this four weeks. They have the capability to flush everything and start over can't catch a fastball you can't catch a fastball it's been a theme it, but they it could be they're they're catch, in his hands too. They're not it's, catch definitely in his, balls, it's definitely in his head and, they, and it, you know go ahead, go ahead yeah uh you don't know if, if Carson's gonna come back come back out there in the third quarter huh. Gunner goes out there and the crowd freaks out and you know, before Gunner starts doing freak well out in on the that good drive, way, right? No, I yes, freak out in a good way. Why yeah. Georgia or fans are so ready to eat their own? They're, it, they're, like, they're elite at it. it. Yeah, I mean, it's it's Carson, nothing new I mean, we're with not Carson. We're not winning the national championship without Carson Beck. I, I, not with this team. Now next year with Gunner, that's a different conversation because it's Gunner's. You know, they can yeah. script things and so forth. But like, they adjusted when Gunner came in. They had to. But, but was, that, that drive was was the biggest drive of the entire game. And, and it gave it gave Georgia – I'm just putting this here, man. I don't even care. Yeah. It, it gave Georgia – I mean, that's when I was like, oh, they're going to win this game. Yeah. Big oh, plays on that. Big catch by Lawson wow. Lucky on that drive. A couple man, of nice, tight ends. A couple of nice runs by Gunnar Stockton on that drive. Great shot, Ryan, on yeah, uh, Lawson Lucky. Nailed that shit. Thank nailed you. Nailed it. Credit. Um, nailed it. Appreciate it. Uh, but it, it, the crowd just – it. Not only did the team get juice, I think that in a way, it it they had something they needed to rally around. It wasn't yes. just that they rallied; they had to, and they did it, and they did that around Gunner because he hasn't played a significant snap in his entire Georgia career. Right? He's he's played a couple garbage time games. Yeah, something that's so and dangerous. This is yeah, that's but when ETN wow just, yeah, wow it, yeah, yeah, he's is, really aggressive up there. Wow yeah. when ETN took off for that long run. I, yeah. The place about exploded. It did. I am concerned for the SEC championship game. I've been to this game since 2002, uh, and I am concerned for this game. That did not feel like an SEC championship game at the beginning of the game. It did not feel like it for a long time. It only started feeling like it in the second half, and I, I'm concerned about the game. I love that game. I think it's, it's one of the great yeah. games in – I've been to the Masters, the Derby, 
uh, Final Four, all these things. This SEC Championship game is such a great thing. And I'm concerned about the game. I'll, I'll say that out loud. And I don't know if it was just that there weren't a lot of Texas people there. There were plenty of Texas people. There were a lot of empty seats. Too many. Cheap a tickets. Lot of empty seats. People just, uh, you know, my, my guess is that it's just people weren't excited knowing that both of these teams are in no matter what. But it this game matters still. And that's that's what Kirby was talking about. That was one of the things he said. He said he hated to say it, yeah. but he didn't feel the juice at the beginning. He's right. And it, it really was Gunnar Stockton that brought the juice to that stadium. It, no one would have guessed that, right? If you were laying your bets out, we were talking about hot takes before the game. None of them involved Gunnar Stockton. Um, <laughs> Where the hell is the deep ball from anybody in Georgia? It's, it's not I mean, there, and it's not there, and it wasn't. Dome Bell's it wasn't catch even, it. Yeah. Dome Bell's got to so catch it. Aaron, Aaron Smith, Smith's got to catch it. I mean, th- th- I mean, I'm yeah. not here to. I'm not here to run those guys down. I'm not. I'm. It's t- it's time though. It it's, was. It's Carson there. did not play bad in the first half. No. He's got to get some up. He can't catch it. Mike Bobo can't catch it. No, and the, did, the, the, the offensive line's got to play better, yeah. too. They they were definitely getting beat up, but damn that defense, man. And that offensive line stepped up, though, as they the game did. They did. And then they adjusted. Like, yeah. you know, Texas really should have put more points up. I mean, they kind of didn't. And I was like, they're letting these guys hang around. That is a huge mistake. In Atlanta, I can't wait to hear the complaining that this game is in Atlanta. Look, the league is is on this side of the earth. We're not going to start playing this game in Dallas or Houston or wherever. Get in line. There's a contract to through 31 or 2 or whatever it is. Get in line. Take your medicine. You ain't the best team in the league. It's Georgia. I don't want to hear about it. I don't want to hear the crying. I don't want to hear the complaining. I don't want to hear about this game being moved. They get media be- days It belongs. Yeah, and that was ridiculous. I, I, you know, the game belongs at Mercedes Benz. It is the capital of college football. Period. It's not Dallas, and you know, Dallas is where the Big Twelve plays. So I don't want to hear that from the Texas contingent. Uh, what I would say to them is, I think it's great that they're in the league. They add. I mean, Texas could win the national championship, but baby, you got to get in line. You got to get in line with everybody baby, baby else. Girl. Uh, you got to get in line with everybody else. How you far know. are they in line? Uh, they're not that far from number right. one. I mean, like uh, they're 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 definitely in. And I don't mean it in a negative way. I mean, the SEC has always been people. You know, the fans really hate each other, but the league all works in unison. To be honest with you, and the notion that they would. I mean, I, I just know how it's going to be. You know, like LSU people don't make a big deal about it being in Atlanta, you know, but they won the game. So, uh, well, they won in nineteen. So anyway, I, I just was just such mental toughness. I, I like Texas now. It's a good team. I, I think Ewers played pretty well, but they got to be able to run the ball better. That was not good enough. Yeah, and it was the same thing that happened the last time. Georgia shut down their run game. Why, And they though? put the Why? pressure. When they couldn't do it against Georgia Tech, they couldn't do it against UMass. It, it came down. I mean, the reason why I picked Georgia was I thought that it was a bad matchup for Texas. It might we be. We saw it the first time around. And we saw the exact same thing tonight. See, I wonder if they play a third time, which I'm assuming, and would only happen, should only happen in a national championship game, and at worst a semifinal. But, but even still, it should be they should be on the opposite side of brackets of each other, which is what's so wrong with this entire thing to begin with. But I wonder if Georgia wouldn't be more effective you know, offensively against Texas in a third matchup. People say, it's really hard to beat someone three, two times or whatever. I mean, whatever. I mean, I don't want to hear all – there's so much stuff I don't want to hear. It's just like people just repeating things. Georgia, you know, they've won two close – or they've won two fights with Texas, Matt. That's all. It doesn't Uh, mean they'd win the third. They won one fight, and the other one, they handled them. Well, they They handled handled them defensively tonight. you got to think about it, Ryan. Has Texas driven the field – they have not driven the field but one time in two games against Georgia. That was tonight. And it was on an explosive play. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, That counts. I mean, yeah. I thought ETN changed the game, though, for me. Yep, absolutely. Um, and they just played a little more crisp, more efficient, with a little more fire in the second half. And I don't know if some of it had to do with Gunnar Stockton. Some of it had to do with the people can't see you, man. Yeah, you're a little bit. Yeah, there you go. Oh, uh, said, no, no one wants to see this. No one wants to see this. My, my wife doesn't watch. Um, but Thank God. <laughs> thank God, yeah. Uh, I'd be in trouble with some of the stuff no. I say here. But, um it's when the game mattered and when guys had to make a play guys step up and they have all year and they did it tonight yep. and then 
What did Kirby say? He said the, the never quit dogs or something like that. Never say die. He said never say, never die, say die. I mean. And a lot of that goes is coaching. And a lot of it is leadership. The coaching has been. This game is the best game that Kirby has ever coached. He managed it. Wow. I, I, did I not say that before? You said. Maybe not in that way. No, it no. is the best game he's ever coached. It may well be their springboard to a third national championship. It would not surprise me. That wouldn't surprise me. This team has not played to its level of potential yet. This was a good game. Yeah. This is not. They can still play better. They can play better. They can score 30 on Texas, 35 on Texas. Texas is really good. Texas, Texas and Georgia might be the best two teams in the country. I don't necessarily think that's true. But, but it, Texas is not number five. So get down here. what now? Get down here. I mean, <laughs> I, I, I just I just love the SEC championship game. It's such a. But it was different, and I'm concerned about it. But I, I think uh, it was a huge grit and determination, and you know, fight from Georgia. I mean, they they though are allowed. This was Kirby's best performance, and as I've written earlier in this year, and I'll continue to write. He can really set himself apart as a head coach by winning a national championship with a team that is not the best, most obviously best team. I mean, Shevsky did that in certainly in in uh, '91. Also, I would say in 2015. Yes, that was, that was yes for sure. I mean, that was not that a was great not the, team. That was like the third or fourth best. Team. Yeah, but they won it, and like that's just one example. There there are other examples, um, you know. But you you know. That is really like that would be some next level shit if he did that, and he's got a chance to do that now. Was the fake punt the play of the game? If you had to, did they I get, think they scored a field goal on that drive, so they yeah, turned that, it you, into you, points. You had to have that. I don't understand what's so hard. I mean, why are you driving fifty miles an hour on I eighty five? What are you doing? No, everyone's just flying this. I mean, there was fifty. Anyway, yeah, I think the fake punt took some balls, man. I mean, but like one thing Kirby said in the post game was, um, you know, it's really easy to call that when you know you're in the playoff. And he's right. But yeah. I think Sark's got to be frustrated, man. Does you he know? have a Georgia problem? That, that was some of the noise I, don't I heard know in the stadium. about all that. You know, I don't know about all that. Does he have a Georgia problem? It was mostly, lost it was some... mostly a joke, but I mean, um, you know, 0 2. You know, he, yeah. That'll be the team that they have to beat, though. That's gonna be hard now, to do. They've got to go through Georgia at some. That's point. gonna be hard to do in Athens. But everybody has this. You know, you talk about you know the Bulls and the Pistons, and you know I, this is how it goes. And you know Georgia had to knock out Alabama, and then you don't know. I mean, te- Georgia might not be there for for Texas to have to deal with. You know, that's yeah. why you keep playing and just see. I mean, the Arizona State looked great today. Yeah, they did. I mean, they, and I think both of back. their losses were close losses, too. So I it mean, might be a little bit better of a team than people realize that the Sun Devils yeah. have. Uh, I think Boise is a good team. I think Boise is fine, but Arizona State should be getting that by him, period. So should Clemson. I'm sorry. I'm not sorry. I don't care. I was going to say, you're not sorry. I, I don't yeah. care. It's so stupid that we're doing this. But I think I think for Texas, you know, Arch, Arch may make them a different offense next year. With his capability, but boy, Ewers get that ball out quick. And he was he accurate. Is. He is. The ball he placement is, was there. I thought he played he's, well. He's good. Just man. a couple no, mistakes. He's, he's good. There were there were a few ball. There was one where it could have been a touchdown if he threw a good ball. But there was there were a few mistakes. How many balls did he have? Forty. Well, in the first half, he threw it like twenty-five or twenty-six it's, times it's, it's compared to Carson's ten. Well, they didn't have Georgia didn't have the ball. Point. Yeah. yeah. That was it. Georgia just did not have the ball, and but that was—they also couldn't run. They threw it 46 times. Yeah, that's that's a lot. That's asking a lot, particularly in a game where you're not even scoring 20 points. Yeah, I mean, again, he had some uh, passes that were dropped. I mean, it yeah, was he not did. a clean game. For no, 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 it team. wasn't. It wasn't. I love that all white from Texas, man. Shit, that's that looks good. Look, I mean, that looks good. It's that's good way better than their home jerseys. And it, you know, but. I don't know how many people to watch that. Maybe 14, 15 million people. I think the the the, the ba- Georgia Bama in twelve was sixteen million. I don't know if it'll catch that. But that was it was one of the best games of all time. But this was pretty good too, man. It was a great game. I mean, it came down to the last play of the game, like twenty twelve. I, the thing about that run, you know, and Brian was hammering down intelligently on that on that run. I could not see it. I hate those situations for Which me. Run? 
the game winner because yeah. I can't tell what the hell's happening when they're that close. But I heard yeah. it. It looked like Gunner was about to score the game winner. And then he uh, got yeah. knocked out yeah. Mike Tyson yeah. 1989. I mean, yeah, like, that did. was bad. He got but he didn't fumble. He had, he had three points of pressure. Yeah. If he had fumbled there, they lose the game. They lose. If, if he fumbled. Because that wasn't targeting. Because yeah. I have his no idea. in the back of his head three I, times. What is, can, can, can someone explain targeting? Because Kirby no. seemed to be cool with well, it. He hit him in the shoulder, but he hit him oh, in the Oh, he hit head. him in the shoulder? He hit him with the shoulder. No, it wasn't helmet he, to helmet. It hit him with... His helmet hit first, and then his shoulder hit the helmet. It was targeting to me. Um, I, 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 it was vicious. But I yeah, know that. yeah. Kirby said in the post game press conference that that Dalen Everett might have gotten MVP, but it goes he would give it to Etn. Yeah. What a spark! I think that was the best run that Georgia had all year. Yes. Statistically, it, did, it yeah. might actually be. Before it was a 52 yard run by Anthony Evans, so I don't know if that was longer than 52 yards. But he he. Just, that's what I've been yeah. expecting. Yeah, you know, like that. The moments that that he had tonight is is what you were expecting. And that's Frazier's ran well too. Yeah, um, the and the way that he hands. navigated yeah, the whole yeah, the fumble wasn't good. Good on Arian Smith to get that ball, but the way that Frazier navigated the holes and he was patient. It was. Um, I love Nate Frazier, but it's made just a couple the Le'Veon Bell types of plays. Yeah, it's just um, the fumbles, which is also yeah. a thing you have to. You know, it's three points of pressure, the whole deal. I mean, like, you're allowed to think when you're out there. You're allowed to, you know, I wouldn't think too much. I think the receivers are thinking too much. If I'm if I'm Frazier, I'm thinking, hey, three points of pressure the whole time. And that's why guys, you know, Patrick Pass, we went to high school together. You know, Pat would have the ball with him all day Friday. He had the ball like this it, all day class. Yes. Yeah. 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 Well, I, Pat and I were not saying. algebra when you can run the ball? I mean, what are we talking about? I mean, he. I love people making fun of Patrick Bass. Like he was like, I mean, the guy like the guy won Super Bowls as a fullback, and people are questioning his toughness. Like people are so stupid. Uh, he's a dog, and we saw a lot of dogs out there. Yeah, they played great, man. I mean, I think that you you played two quarterbacks for two halves. You had a defense out there. Jalen Walker was was good, not great, but really good. Hey, they were not calling holding against uh, Jalen Walker tonight. That's that's Michael what I'll say. Michael Williams made a, Michael Williams made a play. Him. I've seen Malachi Starks play better. That was not good. Um, but no, that was not good. So the, the other thing with that's Malachi too good. is it, he's obviously the most talented guy in their secondary, but. His job is harder when you don't have Tyke Smith, Javon Bullard, and Kamari Lasser out there. It's a different level of a secondary than what they're dealing with this season, obviously. And this, this my, my statement now is going to be pretty ignorant, but I, I don't know if he's trying to do too much. Um, I mean, some, I was sometimes it, really yeah. good players do that. They're like, man, I got to, you know. Play but, hero ball. Yeah, and, but I think you just got to be what it is that you are. But, again, that's me legitimately being ignorant. I don't know. Um, but he's a really good player. Yeah. I, I, this this team has got four weeks to lock it in. They, they will be a different team. They will be much more to me, like the second half team in this game, than we've seen. And I think that ETN very specifically, you know, they, they need to get guys healthy, including ETN. And, you know, he hadn't played in forever. He hadn't played a full game since the last Texas game. It's a long yeah. time. And uh, this this team, it's there, man. I'm just saying, Matt DeBerry, it's it's there. Now it ain't right there. Oregon's good. There's some other teams that are good. I, my suspicion is, if Georgia were to ever get matched up with Penn State, that'd be a tough matchup for Penn State specifically because I don't know how they'd score. Yeah, I think now that you're in the playoffs, like you said, get healthy and just try to play your best. It's game by game at this point. Nothing matters. You got the bye. Yeah. You went through the schedule. You went on the road. You won the conference. You've got a bye. Amazing. You're, you're right there. You just got three more wins, uh, and you're winning another crown. And this team has shown that even when they're not, they're not playing their best, and even when they sometimes maybe don't deserve to win the game, they still find a way. But and they, they earned it plays. tonight. They uh, earned it tonight. Now, now, last week. But first half, I, again, it did look better. But it doesn't matter. Yeah, but it's on Texas too. I yeah. must say they that, can hit their field goals. That, well, you gotta kind of close things out. I mean, like, what are you doing? Yeah, fall on one of the fumbles. Yeah, you're allowed to to, to do that too. I don't know. I, I don't know if this like sets Texas back or not or what. I mean, like, why is it jammed in here? Texas can yeah. still win the whole thing. Yeah, I mean, but it's yeah, that's a discouraging loss, man. I mean, that that just was just we're only gonna dis- here for a couple. Minutes. No, I know. Yeah. That was an extremely <clears throat> discouraging loss. 
I mean, I don't, I don't know. I don't know. I, I, I mean, I, I would be, I would be pretty aggravated if I were a Texas supporter right now. But they, 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 you know, Georgia was a better team in the second half. Yeah. And that's why they won the game. Matt DeBerry, uh, final feelings here at the end. Uh, we talked about how Georgia was battle tested, and Texas wasn't necessarily. And we saw that I think in the fourth quarter in overtime. And when Texas kicked that field goal, I remember thinking, Georgia's going to come down here and score a touchdown. Uh, and they Oscar, out- De- oh, Oscar, they don't do that without Oscar Dell. Oscar, two big catches late, and he blocked his ass off too. But at the end of the day, Ryan, when it mattered the most. They had guys step up, and again, they earned this victory as C champs. They effectively ran the football against Texas multiple times, and that's one of the biggest differences. They they affected the quarterback. The things that they didn't do in a lot of the other games this season that we said they need to keep doing, they did it in the two biggest games they played this season, which was against Texas twice. So that that to me is what won them the game, along with you know just getting juiced up in the second half, but. They got the bye. After all this, they got the bye. They're going to the Sugar Bowl. New Orleans, New Year's Eve for this crew. If you can run the ball like that and play defense like that and you've got Carson Beck as your quarterback, you, you I was about to say you should, but you very well could win the national championship. Ohio State is still very deadly. I would say Oregon uh, but but and, and Texas. But Georgia – Georgia has got something about them. They've got a very stiff spine, and uh, kudos to that coach. Now, I'm telling you right now, my, my just my perspective. You know, Kirby's coached 120-ish games. This is the best one he's coached for me. Thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next one.